Welcome back to Hero of Leaf Valley. Got Word on the Wind joining me once again. Howdy, howdy. We're already off to a great start in fall. Already we're getting drowned. And unfortunately, because it's raining on the first day, I can't plant any new crops and have them guaranteed to stay there. But I'm gonna do it anyway, because damn it, I just need it. You are farming the rice of determination. One of them will stay. I will be the proudest rice farmer of all time. I think I filled the entire plot with seeds and like half of them stuck. <laughs> so it's an allegory for the uh, target audience of the original release of the game. Desperation. <laughs> Desperation and only about half of it stuck. <laughs> right now we're just exploring the town. It is a new season. There are new crops to find. There are new things to knock out of trees. The walnuts in particular respawning every day. Which still baffles me. I noticed that you've been using them for dog food. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's nominally kinder than me just giving the dog weeds, so... <laughs> Which I also do. <laughs> I'm not sure... Um, I read a walkthrough that implied that depending on the quality of the food, like how much stamina the food would recover on its own, that will affect how much friendship points you get when you feed it to the dog. But I can't guarantee that. That would make sense, and it would be one of those things that I would expect Harvest Moon to do. But I don't care enough about the dog to give it anything other than weeds, so, you know, <laughs> I can be patient. Although, you did say one thing that kind of got me, and it was like, I was operating on the notion this entire time that the only way you could get power berries in Leaf Valley here was not at all, but then you mentioned that you could get them with the dog digging around. I'm like, wait, that's what you have to do to get power berries in this? They do exist? They do exist. Uh, we won't be able to get them until winter. Not for any particular reason, but just because it took me that long to remember they exist. Because you're right, the only way to get them is to train your dog. That is awful. In fact, as you were talking, I was thinking, is there a use to the dog? And then as I was speaking, I remembered, that's it. <laughs> it is a new season, so we do have a new room in the mine. This one also branches off into two separate mine rooms, which continue to branch off into new rooms. In fact, in the next season, winter, both of those rooms open up. Fair. So we get double new mining rooms next season, but for now, it's a big room with a lot of rocks, so... And a lot of pushing, apparently. It's like that for every room. Like, more than it seemed than for the other ones. The two puzzles for this room have the most pleasing aesthetic. Like, they're both very symmetrical. It did seem more pattern-based. Yeah. trying to adjust the camera to show you. Yeah, that was some amazing camera work there. It is a PSP, you gotta use one single button to control it. Though, I am still amazed at how bad the Save the Homeland camera was. <laughs> oh boy. Because you remember the April Fool's video? Yeah. I was recording that and the game is on the PS2. It has that second control stick, which yes. you would use for the camera, and it's still even worse than this game, which doesn't. Yeah, like, it was in that really strange doldrum area of we haven't figured out that the right analog stick can be used for the camera. Harvest Moon games are amazing. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> this game in particular is amazing. You can get stuck on bugs. <laughs> That just, that just makes me think of Advance Wars. You can trap a jet fighter by surrounding it with infantry. <laughs> I've always wanted to play that series, but I never did. <laughs> no, I have a new reason to play it. I have played the ever-living hell out of that series. It just reminds me of when Chip Cheesem was describing and playing, I think it was Civ 4, 
and oh. <laughs> some natives with spears took down a, a air carrier. It was a battleship. A I battleship. That story. <laughs> <laughs> to which the response was, "What the hell were you doing attacking spearmen with a battleship, you asshole?" <laughs> they won. <laughs> Uh, well, the good news is, if you're attacking infantry with the battleship in Advance Wars, they can't hit it back. <laughs> Unless the ship is right parked up next to the infantry, in which case they will plink away and not really accomplish anything. Great. <laughs> Rocket infantry, on the other hand, might accomplish something. They hit about as hard as tanks, so they'll dent it? <laughs> well, rockets... There's a couple of things in Lila's shop. There's two crops specific to fall, onions and pumpkins, which, unlike watermelons in the last season, are actually used in recipes. In fall is when she specifically pays more for wild mints, which I I grew a crap ton of those last season. I hung on all to all of them, but I forgot that I hung on to them specifically to sell, so I didn't sell all of them. <laughs> But I eventually get rid of them, but <laughs> that's me being silly. Yeah, that's just kind of the Harvest Moon experience. It's like, okay, I'm going to stockpile these things, and why do I have all of these? <laughs> what was I thinking? What was I doing? My life is a lie. One really cool thing, though, is Lewis is specifically looking for scrap metal. So you can make a ton of money from Lewis in the fall. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, it's time for more crazy fishing time. I see way too many Alaska Pollocks. I'm having a big problem with this, this Alaska part. <laughs> like, I asked this before, where the hell is this island? You catch albacore and swordfish off the damn coast. And then you catch Alaskan fish? I'm more annoyed that they're not worth crap. <laughs> but there's so many of them. And they're big fish, but they're not worth much. And I've knocked myself out. I think that might be on account of the fact that they are, in fact, bootleg. They're not authentic fish. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the secret. Like, what, what's, what's the name of it? Uh, Funland or something? Fun Park? Funland, yeah. Funland. I have a feeling that they were just put there by Alice and her crew. It's like, hey, check out all of the exotic wildlife around here. And you're just plinking away, and they're just like, ugh, damn it, that fishing bastard. Well, that would help protect the town. Speaking of random wildlife. Uh, here we are. One of the two endings that I actually got and saved the homeland. I only ever bothered to complete one. I tried to do more than two, but I just couldn't jive with the game enough. Especially since in that one, you have the one year, and then after that, you start again. There's something similar to that in this, but you are able to complete all of the endings. And even then, if you do, you can still restart the whole thing. Yeah, and I, that's one thing that they've got better about over time, was allowing you to play after the goal. Which I think the most recent title where they actually had you not play after a win condition was achieved was Magical Melody. Because I know that if you marry Jamie, then it just ends the game. I think that's the only case for that. Well, that's one of those... There's a couple of games where, depending on who you marry, the game will end. In the uh, in the Game Boy and Game Boy Color er, ones that let you play as a lady, you get married. Game ends. Yeah. If you want to play into like beyond that, you have to actively remain single in Game Boy Color Three Harvest Moon. Japan is funny. <laughs> That's one word to describe them. 
Speaking of funny, Chester here becomes funnier as the game goes on. Like, he already starts out weird. He's obsessed with the Harvest Goddess. Right. Everything he does and thinks is for the Harvest Goddess. But as the game goes on, that's just going to become better and better as a joke. <laughs> right now, the guys are looking for a secret basement in the church. I love the way they run. <laughs> They ran just like Team Rocket. <laughs> oh, just you wait until you're two. <laughs> <laughs> the game is like, no, that this is intentional. <laughs> oh, speaking of Team Rocket, I had the most like shocking realization recently. You may or may not know, but the the voice cast for the original release of Valkyrie Profile had a lot of four kids voice actors. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize it, but my end team was Team Rocket. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it's like I knew I knew the wizard lady was Jesse. I didn't realize that the other two were James and Meowth. If only this game had voice acting. Oh boy. This is another one of the new minds. You can see it's nice and symmetrical, but that makes getting it slightly bit tricky. Yeah, this one's actually giving me, like, Sokoban flashbacks. That is a nice pattern, though. Yeah. I went to that specific rock to break it. I think any of the middle ones count. Right. But I didn't trust myself. <laughs> I gave you a rock in your birthday. And now he will save your farm. <laughs> exactly. I heard that in the other video, and I was just thinking, wow, if you're sick, he'll just come in and help your farm. That dude is a lot more sturdy than he looks. Yeah. Like there's fuck all work to do on my farm anyway. <laughs> I'll water all the things and tend to all the livestock. I work with machines. This is entirely foreign territory. So this is a bit of an undertaking. Well, we'll just you wait until I collapse again and I actually have befriended someone so they can do that. <laughs> the person who shows up, like, they're even less suited to it. <laughs> is it gonna be Bob? <laughs> He, no, he, he is suited to it. This person has no reason to be doing it. He's suited to the horse, not the cows, clearly. Well, he just has to feed them. He doesn't need to pet them or milk them. <laughs> and he has a cow. I assume he knows how to take care of it. I like to imagine he just goes up to the crops and he throws fodder at them. It's like, this works, right? <laughs> this is how you feed a plant? Where'd it go? It disappeared in the ground. Fertilizer, right? Fodder, <laughs> interchangeable. They start with F. Smack. Whoa, smash cut. <laughs> Parsley, you insist on defying your true identity of Basil. <laughs> and there's a character in Magical Melody who is him, who's named Basil. <laughs> yep. So in fall, around, like in the first week of it, Parsley will come along and say he's buggering off for the rest of the season. He'll come back in the last week of the season. Yeah. That's just kind of his thing. He'll hang around for a little bit and then he just kind of screws off and doesn't come back unless he's friends or there's a part of a season or something. His head looks like an anvil. wonder he's not a carpenter or a blacksmith. Like, I imagine if, like, Woody needed his help, then he would just ask Bob, you tackle this tree. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna fill up my barn. <laughs> it's about time. But I think I'll do something, aside from just buying the last cow, we'll actually show what it looks like to get a cow pregnant. Oh, wow. The 
most inefficient manner possible. Yep. As an aside, I was really happy about the mill tank because I am a Pokemon nerd. I hadn't guessed. <laughs> On the positive side, that means it is the fastest cow in your ranch. Yeah, you'll you'll notice that once we get through it. I don't know why. Oh yeah, because I bought it. We're sitting there like, how did you get into the barn? <laughs> If you have one on the inside and the rest are the outside, you ring the bell, do they just change places? No. Thankfully, the game's smarter than that. It just... the cow that's inside will come out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it makes sure to even it out first. That's good. There's a cranberry. I've been wondering where we're gonna get those for the last two seasons. Why is a cranberry in a tree?! Harvest Moon. <laughs> Did the albacore put it there or something? <laughs> because that's just about as inappropriate a location. Sakura salmon, huh? I don't know what any of these fish are. I guess the season's appropriate for that fish, given the name. So we were talking about albacore. There's an actual tuna. In a cave. <laughs> and we can catch them in the ocean. But the first one, for whatever reason, I caught in a cave. <laughs> that is the most lost fish. <laughs> oh, they're fucking everywhere. Them and Alaska Pollocks. That's why I, I think that's why I'm most annoyed when I catch Alaska Pollocks. Because the tuna are worth so much more. <laughs> Entirely fair. Can you turn the tuna into a sandwich with the onion? Oh, I wish. No, you can cook them and they... Like, most fish will create broiled fish if you put it in the frying pan. Mm. Tuna will give you tuna steak. Huh. Never thought of having a steak out of tuna. Well, they're... This is the Good Eats fan coming on me, but... <laughs> yeah, when they, uh... When they clean tunas, they uh, cut off loins, like... And they look like cow sirloins. Mm. And you can treat them like steak, really. Smash cut to costume swap. Speaking of costume swap... If you didn't like Dia before, this cutscene isn't going to help. <laughs> I have no comprehension of human sociability. You all look vaguely similar in design. You are clearly inferior, for I have money. You do not, and you make no sense to me. So Dia's sad that Gina's talking to people. Really? Wouldn't you be if your one social contact went and kept talking to a potato? <laughs> We're all potatoes, look at us. <sighs> Not more than Dio. Why did Kurt say I'll be brave? There's a couple of moments where it feels like the dialogue was meant for a different character or context. I was gonna say, that seemed a little backwards. Oh, is that the silk? That is a silk. As a symbol of my apology, as opposed to giving you an apology. <laughs> silk thread. <laughs> So that's why it has question marks. We don't know if it's actually Silk Thread because Dia gave it to us and she doesn't know Jack. I read an encyclopedia. <laughs> it also said Silk Thread. I imported it from the Chinese island over there. <laughs> Where we also got the Alaska Pollux.
<laughs> so yes, that's their signal that this is timed. If you don't go directly to the Harvest Goddess, she's not going to give a shit. <laughs> it's like she's the Harvest Goddess. Yeah. I brought a different colored potato for you. <laughs> Maybe I'll hand you that this one. <laughs> I kind of miss, like, back in the first game where these guys' existence was kind of a secret and they weren't, like, just a trio of color-coded slackers. The same trio in so many games, too. Yeah, I know. It's those three that are in A Wonderful Life, and they don't do anything in that. Yeah. Oh, also, at the end of the cutscene, Harvest Goddess decides to give us a little quiz. <laughs> Is she hinting at you or something? <laughs> like, you gave me a- you gave me something and claimed a potato. It was not. <laughs> I'd like an actual vegetable, please. <laughs> That kind of confuses me. So, I put in oil, I get the uncooked version of tuna steak. <laughs> Carpaccio is specifically raw. Yeah, okay. I certainly put a lot of effort into this ponta print thing. Considering you only need 30. Yeah. Ever. Like, are there any prizes beyond just giving the 30, like, for filling it out? Nope. Holy shit. Wow. Super fumble. Ah, damn it. <laughs> Alright, now I really want whatever this thing is. <laughs> this thing does not want to be caught. It's just another damn tuna. You know, in fairness, if something's going to give you a huge hassle to catch it, it's going to be a tuna. But it was only that one, that once. <laughs> Fried leather fish. That sounds like something you don't want to apply salt to. Leatherfish just doesn't sound appetizing, and I just wasted a tuna on him. <laughs> you just swing the tuna. <laughs> I'll bring you to the fish! All the fish you will ever want. Really basic fruit recipes. Like, cooking in video games is, like, one of those things that has, like, so many shortcutted abstractions that's, like, I always get the idea of, oh, hey, this might be kind of neat to pursue. And then I think about what would actually go into it and do a little bit of looking, I'm like, screw that. <laughs> I am not a cook. I just enjoyed that of the options, of the things I can put into this recipe, I can put rocks, I can put bugs. Stone soup, yo! At some point while I was either recording this season or just along the way through to the second year, I decided what the ultimate goals for the Let's Play would be. I'm gonna get all of the recipes, I'm gonna get all of the fish prints. Like, I'm not necessarily gonna show me cooking all the recipes, but if I get them from Ponta, I'll count it and then just right. leave it there. And. I'm also going to get all of the events, because so far, I've been able to get all of them, so it's like, why not? Oh, yeah, good job. Really, to complete all of the stories, just make friends with people and walk around town. Yeah. You'll get the cutscenes. Yep. That's That sounds like Harvest Moon. Not really any decisions to be made, just, you know, how long can your patience last for talking to these people? It lasted two years and, like, 
three days worth of actually talking to people, but it counted for four years. Jeez. In game, I, di I didn't take four years to record this. I certainly hope not. That would mean you've discovered time travel. And if I did, I'd have better things to do than record Harvest Moon. <laughs> Your secret is out. Damn. I care more than I let on. That's a weird looking flower. <laughs> it looks like just someone attempted to draw a dandelion on verbal reference only. I like how anytime I talk to Martha about endangered animals, she's like, oh, I hit one of those once. <laughs> You're not helping. I have a new favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> also, look at that. I have already have enough. Like, it's not even the second year yet, and I already have over 50,000 gold. Don't tell anyone, but those endangered animals are the secret recipe in Dia's food. What's she gonna say? Ooh, I remember this taste from an encyclopedia. <laughs> Have you been eating your literature again? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because you keep feeding me rats. <laughs> You're so fucking pathetic, dear. Can you come over? I'm kind of worried. There's only us women in the villa. That's why I left the villa to come get you. <laughs> what? And guess who it is? It's just Tim. The boar? <laughs> what? I'm very interesting. <laughs> you know, if Tim just, like, rammed down the front door with his front teeth, I would have all the respect for him. <laughs> it's like, no, this this is not a child. This is an experienced adventurer. Tim's actually involved in a number of events. Yeah, I've noticed that. It changed his appearance wildly from Save the Homeland. He looked more like a kid in the original. Yes, yes, and this he looks kind of like, just like, a shonen protagonist. Like, it could be your age, he's just a foot shorter, maybe. Yeah. One of those Edward Elric types that has a thing about being short. And having a band-aid grow out of his face. Yeah. And another flower. I just grew these for the hell of it, so we'd have some variation. LP's basically done just decorating around now. <laughs> oh no, when we get to the later seasons, I don't even give a shit. I just... I just <laughs> breeze through the day to get to the cutscenes, because I have no reason to grow anything anymore. I've done all the recipes. I befriended everyone in town. Yeah, that, that sounds familiar. That's how it is for Tale of Two Towns as well. I like how I could talk to all three of them about the sacred land and none of them have anything to say. <laughs> Do they ever? Not really. They only exist for the cutscenes, not to instigate any of them. Pretty much. And to give you the fishing bait, which you can get in much more reliable ways. That's like the most useful thing they do in the majority of the games. Yeah, it seems like only the portable games where like you can actually enlist them to help on the farm. Otherwise, this is about as good as it gets. It's very strange how like there's like no middle ground with them. They're either really useful or really useless. Harvest Moon DS is even better. It's a bit of both. Because if you tell them to go fishing down at the beach, there's a chance that they'll crash your game. <laughs> like, it'll either crash the game or it'll make you a millionaire overnight. Again, there's no middle ground. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> For clarity... 
The reason I'm talking to everyone about the sacred land is because Tim gave us a treasure map to find it. And it's the dumbest thing because you can see the entrance. You can walk up to it, you can click on it, and the game will just say you can't go here yet. Oh, cutscene plot gating. Like, it'd be fine if they put a rock, but no. I just can't go there. I can't raise my leg up a foot. As you attempt to step forward, you find yourself with the thought of, this is too easy. <laughs> Isn't there a story to tell here? I need to do this right. <laughs> I think how Lila is implied to have emotions, but she only has the one face. Which just looks constantly happy. Oh, Basil, I mean Parsley, look into my eye- oh, wait. I wish the game had told me I was going to be doing a minigame. Oh, dear. And told me how to play the minigame before they dropped this on me. <laughs> oh, wow, this is... This is the worst DDR. <laughs> okay. What I'm supposed to be doing is using the directional pad to wait for those notes to pass the ocarina and then press the button. If you press a wrong button, the note following, like the, no the next note coming up, will dim out. And you can't play it. But if you keep pressing buttons, you're just going to dim out the rest of the notes. So I've missed the first half because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> the game hasn't told me. This is... There's no reason for this. This only exists to prove how much you suck. So that later cutscenes, people say, You really suck at Ocarina. What happened to that good musician? <laughs> I thought you were like supposed to be like trying to play in concert or something. I'm not practicing, I'm learning, for the first time. Oh hey, you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? The worst part is, the notes don't actually line up to anything. I kinda noticed that. It's like if you tried to play along with the music, you'll only make it worse for yourself. <laughs> Guitaru man, this is not... You're not wrong, Aurelia. We were inside of a building, and we heard it like you were playing it right next to us. Uh... Coming on strong there, Chester. <laughs> it's like he was actually pointing to it. <laughs> oh... Is it what I think it is? It what? Is it pull that sconce on the wall? No, it's actually... Well, I don't know if it's better or worse. <laughs> All I know is we don't find it this cutscene. Because <laughs> I just see that sconce. The, the candle's out. That means things in video games. <laughs> Not this video game. <laughs> I like how when you talk to Tim and Joe about the Sacred Land, they're just talking about each other, how Tim is looking for pirate treasure, and Joe is just like, there's no pirate treasure in a lake. <laughs> no, but there is one in the ocean. And in the cave. And in the cave. But not in a lake. It might be in the lake. I don't, I don't remember. I don't know if I've ever caught it in the lake. I know I've caught pots. There's a shit ton of them in there. <laughs> I don't know what ancient society we flooded. Oh, and I love that fish's face. Did this town get founded on top of the ruins of Atlantis? Is that why everything is here? That's a good point, because there's all these endangered animals everywhere. There's all these ancient 
artifacts. If you wanted to turn this place into, you know, preserved territory, yeah, this is Atlantis. <laughs> the people here descended from them. That would make every government say, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know which government it is. This place doesn't even have a mayor. Unlike all the other Harvest Moons. You know, now that you mention it, I hadn't thought about that. I guess it's Dia because she's the, like, the most high-class, quote-unquote, person in town. Don't give her any like, job. Like, she's the closest thing that they have to a nobility or anything, and that's like, yeah, she fits that bill. Well, nobility, yeah. I'm guessing it's just sort of a completely communal thing. I guess. The advanced civilization of Atlantis. So advanced they didn't even need direction. Like ants. <laughs> Busily going about every day. I want an ant farm called Atlantis now. <laughs> Don't drown him. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, keep it away from the fishbowl. I'm guessing a Porgy is supposed to be like a red snapper. Like a different name for it. I uh, wouldn't know. Some of these have strange names, but then I hear, like, I read about them, and they're known by other, better-known names, but they went for this one instead. Interesting. Her character model kind of reminds me of Nina Williams from Tekken. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> like, you'd almost see the strings, it was so stiff. <laughs> so many of these stories, like, that blue bird is specifically what we're looking for, for Aurelia's story. Right. But so many of these stories would end if it was just like, what if we just had a camera with us at the start of it? <laughs> Yeah. I think there's actually a camera involved in the weasel ending. Yeah. And again, we saw the weasel at the start. Hello. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Salmon are supposed to be there. Yes, salmon are river spawners. And it is fall, so it is, in fact, actually about spawning season. What do you know? Accuracy. It's like, they get so many things right, and then they just get things that are just albacore off the coast. <laughs> I gotta say, this is... this is really good bell. Oh, yeah. This is the best use of the bell in any Harvest Moon game. Oop, gold and egg. look at that. Yep, got our first golden egg. You only need gold eggs for Katie's story, and you specifically need two, not just one. Mm. We'll be getting to that eventually, but I wasn't aware. Because in the original Save the Homeland, you only needed one gold egg and one gold milk. But if you want to complete Katie's story, you need to give her two of each for this one. So I'm a little surprised by this. This is the Harvest Goddess Festival. And the Bachelorette that you have the highest heart ranking with will come and request you go into the festival with her. Apparently that's Aurelia. Huh. Which surprised me, but there you go. Yeah, there's worse options, I suppose. You're not going to be uh, arrested for the one who asked you to go out. <laughs> well, like we said, there's no law or anything here. The advanced civilization of Atlantis. 
No police. And we wonder what happened to it. I don't know, after recent events, I'm kind of thinking that might be a better option. <laughs> yeah. By the way, the Harvest Goddess Festival is the lamest thing, I think, in this game. It usually is. Just kind of like in the series in general. Great camera. <laughs> I just mean I spread a disease. Like, if I recall correctly, the Harvest Festival is basically just one big excuse of, okay, there's one person you like, here's how, here's, you know, a one-time boost to their affection. Oh, you can also give them a present. Yeah. Also, this is the dorkiest dance of all time. <laughs> Wait a minute. Dia and Gina are dancing together. Yeah. Well, you're the only bachelor in town. <laughs> Everyone else is just paired up with someone else. Like, it's moments like these that make me wish Marvelous would just, like, get over themselves and just, like, just let the lesbians have their day. Like, you <laughs> did that once, you can do it again. It's like, they did it in the Japanese version of Harvest Moon DS Cute. But, you know, like, you couldn't, like, go to the regular Bachelorettes, you could only do the special ones, which were the Harvest Goddess, a mermaid... The witch and something else I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, just this woman in the mine who doesn't speak. Yeah. I always thought the, the idea of the witch was the funniest because to woo her, you specifically piss off the harvest goddess. <laughs> and I think you have to kill your animals. Yeah, you, you basically you play the game as wrong, as rude as possible. And she's one of the people that if you marry her, the game ends. <laughs> So that, there's really no other way to cap off a run like that. <laughs> so yeah, that was either one of the best or one of the worst things in Hero of League Valley, just the dance in the Harvest Goddess Festival. <laughs> and I make it a point to show it for the next two years, because I love it so much. <laughs> smash cut to a year later. <laughs> the record, they weren't supposed to be smash cuts, but something just went wrong in editing somewhere. <laughs> it happens. Honestly, it made it funnier to me. It's just like, oh <laughs> shit, suddenly not Basil. Because I think it was him, like, for a majority of them, it was just smash cut to Basil. <laughs> and I found the title for the video. <laughs> and in the next part, we're going to be going off to the second third of the season. Fall is only going to be three parts total. Winter is going to be only two parts. Things mostly just start condensing down to cutscenes specifically, and then talking to people about the cutscenes. We're not going to be seeing a whole lot of new things related to the harvest mooning. <laughs> well, maybe mooning. I don't know about the harvesting. Exactly. <laughs>